Um, good evening. At um, the last meeting, I spoke um, about parental rights and against the policies in place by this board that keeps parents in the dark regarding their children. That meeting opened my eyes to how dysfunctional this board is and the lack of understanding there is for what parents and the community want. It was clear from those who spoke that the majority of parents and citizens want you to change board policy number 5145.3. It was not okay for you to table this item for as long as you please and to avoid voting for change. This item needs to be brought back to the agenda at the next regular meeting. You've had ample time to get the information you need. Additionally, and um, I appreciate Ms. Stalby that you spoke about this just now, but um, I'm still going to address this issue. Um, I was personally harassed by a member of the audience at the last meeting. And those actions were clearly visible by all board members and staff, yet nothing was done. In fact, many people were harassed by the same person and if another parent had not demanded their removal, you would have let the behavior continue. The public has a right to speak to this board without fear of harassment or intimidation. You should have removed the offender immediately. It is obvious that there is a clear lack of understanding of Robert's Rules of Order, as well as the Brown Act, by certain members of this board. The allowance of this harassment was just one example. Speaking on items after a vote with a quorum present preventing a board member from bringing forth a substitute motion, and trying to prevent a citizen from speaking on an item simply because they had spoken on a different item earlier in the meeting are some other examples. How are parents supposed to trust that you are making the best decisions for our children's education when you cannot even be trusted to run a meeting without violating the Brown Act? The fact is we do not trust you. It is clear by the words and actions of some on this board that you have an agenda that you're willing to put our children at risk, and you've forgotten who you work for. You work for the parents and the taxpayers of this district. Bring board policy number 5145.3 back to the next regular agenda and vote for a policy that gives complete transparency and informs parents about everything involving their ch children. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you so much. I addressed the board uh, back in October, and uh, this is uh, a kind of a continuation of the same thing and it's an issue it's maybe another facet of the same issue um, when my daughter started school in this uh, this last fall she was put in a PE class and for uh, three weeks was unaware that she was dressing and undressing in front of a boy uh, when she became aware of it and let me know I was incensed uh, I was furious, I was angry. I came at the next board meeting to say as much, and I did so with as much uh, uh, temper as or with, with as much control as, as I can, as I'm trying to now. But some accommodations have been made. When I found out, I immediately um, said, oh, hell no, that's not happening. I immediately demanded that my daughter not use that locker room, um, that she not be docked on, on her grades for it, um, uh, recognizing she needed to wear appropriate clothing for PE. I went online immediately and spent a few hundred dollars on clothing that was active wear and appropriate for PE, but that she could wear on PE days to school to circumvent the need for a locker room. She shouldn't have to do that. She shouldn't have to do that. Um, the girls and, and, and some accommodations have been made, my daughter has not used the regular locker room. She's able to use another room as there are some other girls that do the same, um, which accommodation I appreciate. However, it's, um, it's not a menu item, kind of like animal fries at uh, in and out If you don't know to ask, you're not getting any. And um, there's girls today, Wednesday's PE day, dozens of girls at Pleasant Valley High School right across the street here were violated, were compromised, were made to feel uncomfortable, were abandoned. My daughter at the beginning of the year, she was thrown into a situation, she was coerced, she was tricked. She was forced to take her clothes off in front of a boy, violating her modesty, violating her dignity, violating her faith. You, you, you individuals, you individuals, forced her into that situation. 
There needs to be accommodations for the dozens and dozens and dozens of girls in this school district who are hurt every day. I know for a fact that there are at least two PE classes at Pleasant Valley that have this situation going on right now where these girls are compromised and violated. And there needs to be some accommodation, some reasonable expectation of privacy for these girls. They're not property. They're not yours. They're not slaves. They're not prisoners. These are young women. These are young men that deserve that dignity. Thank you. That's your time. Good evening. Uh, obviously, the enthusiasm for talking about your in, uh, parent uh, secrecy policy has not been exhausted, even though you tabled the issue. And I, I have reviewed all the material, and I, I'm wondering why you would delay addressing this issue and why you would delay making a clear and concise statement about what is the basis for your policy. You are not here to solve gender nonconformance issue. We're not here to solve all of the emotional problems that may arise in a child who is trying to orient themselves to life, grow up, and mature. That is the responsibility of parents. And so the issue that, that is before you is whether or not you are going to grant parents full transparency, especially for those kids that are an escape of your policy, which is the age 12 to 18. Those are the kids that are at issue in this policy discussion. But rather than address it and let us know what is the thinking and rationale behind your policy, or even clarifying what your policy is, you have basically postponed the discussion. And I am asking myself, why would you do it? Well, you say that you had to do it because you needed to seek legal advice. But you had Paul Gant here, your attorney, giving you a full presentation on all of the background. He was here in attendance with you. You certainly could have asked him questions about what legal concerns you may have. I shared with you my own legal analysis, and as you know, I'm an attorney, about how his uh, uh, presentation was irrelevant to the question at hand, which is what is your policy with regard to your duty to disclose to parents everything that their kids are exposed to that have to do with their health and welfare. That is the issue. So it's not a legal issue. I've also heard that, well, we can't talk about this because we have a pending case. There is no gag order in this case, and there is no legal reason why you cannot discuss your policy, even if there is pending litigation. You may not be advised to talk about the specifics of that particular case, but you are completely free to discuss change, modify, do whatever you want to do with policy from this point forward. And these parents behind you are concerned about what you're doing and why you're doing it. And you have an obligation to them and to the public to disclose exactly what it is that you're thinking, why you're thinking, justify your decisions, and make a decision in public subject to the political process that reflects your policy and the, the, uh, in light of the concerns of the parents. So I urge you to bring this issue back as soon as possible. I think it's worthy of a special meeting. Thank I don't you, think that's you your need time. to wait. Thank you very much. Thank you to everyone who came out tonight in support of parental rights in schools. I'm here tonight on behalf of Congressman Doug LaMalfa. He could not be here tonight due to official duties in Washington, D.C., but he is standing with you, supporting all parents who are exercising their right to be heard in the classroom. Public school employees have no right to exclude parents from their child's lives. They have no right to keep secrets from parents regarding their child, especially while broadly telling those supposed secrets to other students, teachers, and administrators. If other students and teachers know, that is the definition of public. Now you are just keeping it secret from parents. They have no right to unilaterally change an 11-year-old girl's name, pronouns, or tell her to change genders. Parents have a God-given right to make decisions for their children and protect them. School districts cannot take that away. This month, Congress will vote on enacting a Parents' Bill of Rights to prevent this dangerous malpractice from ever harming another child. This bill is directly spurred because of your actions. 
You are part of the national story that is infuriating parents across the country. Congressman LaMalfa is also working on a broadly supported bill that eliminates this so-called ambiguous state policy that Chico Unified School District so drastically mishandled. Thank you. Good evening. I had the opportunity to attend the last board meeting where the sections of the education code were presented by Mr. Grant. I believe the codes were not relevant to the issue the school board is facing right now, which is whether parents have the right to be informed about issues children are facing at school. For example, AB 1266 60, I'm sorry, AB 1266 is irrelevant to the question of parental rights. Board policy 5145.3, nothing in this policy deals with a school counselor right or obligation to keep information from parents. It is also my understanding guidance issued by the CDE has no binding authority to mandate local school policies. Education code section 49602, any information of a personal nature disclosed by a pop pupil, I'm sorry, 12 year of age or older in the process of receiving counseling from a, from a school counselor as specified in section 49600 is confidential. In this case, the student was 11 years old at, this, at the time of the secret transition and the obligation of the district to disclose what they might know to parents is evidenced by the consent form employed by the district that requires express written consent on the parent before a school can engage in counseling service with their child. A better policy might be for schools to practice encouraging students to talk to their parents about any issues affecting their mental health before parents find out from other sources. And to help educate parents on subjects that we can hardly understand, especially I'm a Hispanic, I'm an immigrant, all this is new for me, it's not in my culture, I don't understand. Instead of assuming all parents are unsupportive of their children, schools should serve as bridges to connect families and to improve relationship between teachers and caregivers. I would like to ask the school board write a resolution to affirm the commitment of Chico Unified School District to parents' fundamental rights to direct their children's education and to be informed of matters affecting the emotional health of their children and to encourage partnerships between teachers, students, and parents by directly communicating with and involving parents in the education of our children. Thank you. Hi, good evening, board. Um, so I'm here to also speak on Assembly Bill 1266 and the implementation by the Chico Unified School District. Um, so to me, this issue centers upon the very cornerstone of society, which is the family. Uh, deeper still, this issue involves the intersection of family and the law. The parent's fundamental right is directing the care, custody, and control of their children. Yet it is my opinion that through the so-called parental secrecy policy, the district and the state are attempting to disrupt, limit, and even terminate those rights, and by doing so are acting unethically and perhaps even illegally. Several federal court cases have determined that parents have the fundamental right over their children and that the government shall not interfere with this right unless and until a parent is proven unfit. Notice I did not say assumed unfit, as many of the supporters of the secrecy policy would have you believe that a parent is assumed guilty or being unfit to raise their own children until proven otherwise. I sent ahead a, an email with uh, more uh, federal cases, but I'll cover a few here today. So, uh, one is 1997 in the court case Washington versus Glucksburg. The court ruled that the Constitution and specifically the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment protects the fundamental rights of parents to direct the care, upbringing, and the education of their children. In 2000, in the case Troxel versus Granville, the court again unequivocally confirms that these fundamental rights of parents, when it stated that so long as a parent adequately cares for his or her children, i.e. is fit, there will normally be no reason for the state to inject itself into the private realm of the family to further question the ability of the parent to make the best decisions concerning the rearing of the parent's child. Therefore, a failure to consider the fitness of the parents represents an unconstitutional infringement on that parent's fundamental right to make decisions concerning the care, custody, and control of their children. In, in 2005, quoting court cases 
Yoder, and Troxel, which I sent ahead in an email. In representative in public schools, districts, subjection to children's uh, inappropriate sexual explicit content, the United States House, House of Representatives affirmed that the fundamental right of parents to direct the education of their children is firmly grounded, grounded in the nation's constitutional and traditions. Yet today, in, we see in states all across the country a confusion as to where, to where to land on this issue. I'm not a lawyer, I was raised by one, and I have some sense, so I'd like to point out that these are infringements on our rights. And it's up to the school board and the district to get ahead of this before more lawsuits come and we have more litigation, more unnecessary spending, more disruption to in our classroom, and potentially even worse. Thank, Thank you. you. That's your time. Good evening. I'm reading this letter on behalf of Karen Wilhoyt, a Chico parent who can't be here, and I concur wholeheartedly with her position. As much as Stonewall Alliance and their supporters want to make this a discrimination issue, it is not. This is about protecting all children. It is about supporting the child-parent connection, and it's about transparency. We can make this case without ever disparaging the transgender community. I have huge concerns about the qualifications of the guidance counselors who play such a pivotal role in directing and influencing children in this district, especially if any of that guidance is to be done without parental knowledge or consent. I work for this district as a speech pathologist. I am required to have a master's degree to help children fix things like saying wabbit instead of rabbit or to remediate a stutter. Do guidance counselors have to hold that level of education to help children decide things like whether they should change their ability to pass through puberty or have their own biological children someday. These are enormous life decisions and should not be left in a room with one guidance counselor and one minor child. Excluding parents and guardians from these pivotal conversations is absolutely unconscionable. While there are cases of parents who will make these situations more difficult or harmful, the district should replace the notion of keeping secrets from parents with requiring their guidance counselors be highly trained and highly educated so that they can facilitate proper handling of these situations with family involvement. If that is not attainable, then the policy should be to refer families to outside professionals who are qualified to help in such situations. We should spare no expense in getting this right, leaving such important discussions in the hands of potentially unqualified staff and minor children on an elementary campus is a terrible idea. It's hard to believe this notion is even on the table. Please get the time to get this right. In addition, this is me now, um, I would like to say that public transparency and the parent-school collaboration is key. You've heard and read plenty of public feedback but didn't agendize the secrecy topic for this meeting or make a decision on it or give your positions except for trustee tennis. That omission showed a lack of accountability given our positions. Secondly, this board failed to create a safe environment and properly manage a situation that occurred with me and other women who spoke out against keeping secrets when we were targeted by a couple who used very visible obscene gestures and words in an attempt to intimidate and harass us, which made that couple guilty of the very behavior Stonewall believes parents would exhibit if they were told of their children's possible gender identity situation. Lastly, at the last meeting, the Brown Act violations appeared to occur with one trustee asking the president if she could speak on a topic and was then told the item had passed but proceeded to discuss it anyway. Also, my rights, I believe, were infringed because I was almost prevented from speaking and had to really work hard to be able to have that right. Please revisit the Brown Thank Act. Thank you, that's your time. Good evening. So last month, this governing body told parents to take a hike, basically, by uh, tabling the motion that we are all here to talk about. This district is accused of having a policy that hides important details about children from their parents. This allegation is obviously true. Since that meeting last month, I've read a lot of news articles and spoken with a lot of people, and the two arguments against all those bad parents that I keep hearing are basically, number one, that if kids aren't telling you something, it's basically the parent's fault which I think is a pretty gross attitude to have towards people that supposedly you care about. You care about what they think. Any 12-year-old babysitter can attest to the fact that kids will make things up and hide things from parents and tell stories um, in moments of stress or anxiety or upset or wanting attention or whatever. So it's a pretty weak argument. The other argument that I keep hearing is that there is no parental secrecy policy. <clears throat> 
we received a notification from the district that this was the case. Um, but that's obviously not true. Um, there were lots of people here at the last meeting that were talking about how the policy needs to remain the same because clearly it does allow the district to keep secrets from parents. So the argument, I guess, is basically we don't keep secrets from parents, but we do and it's okay. So I think that's a pretty weak argument as well. We have to have trust with the people that we elect. You that are sitting up on that stage, we're supposed to be able to trust you. Eileen, we can't trust you. You told the entire room last time that you please, have a member don't address, of your own family. Please don't address board members directly. Oh, really? Okay. Well, we heard from a board member last time a personal story about her own family where she hid a, a situation of, of uh, gender change from other family members. And all I will say about that is that that does indicate that we can't trust that you would actually listen to us. You've obviously got a fully formed opinion. This board talks about safety all the time, and safety is, is not what we're organizing around here. It's not safe to put children in a situation where they're getting diagnosis from non-medical professionals and the parents are kept out of the loop. That's not safety. The parents should be in the conversation. They should be aware of what's going on. Last thing, did I hear my, be my beep yet? Okay. Um, so back to the uh, the topic of the of the policy. I have here a document that was provided to me by a person who wants to um, remain anonymous. They're a, a an employee of Chico Unified School District. This is a um, a training module for teachers and and uh, administrators with the school. And it says quite simply: protect privacy. Be careful not to disclose or discuss issues around being LGBTQ with parents or anyone else. It clearly is a district policy. It's in writing. And I have copies of this if anybody wants them. Thank you. Okay, Loretta Ann Torres, the grandma. And um, tonight I'm gonna talk about California Penal Code CBC 261.5 as it defines statutory rape. It occurs when anyone has sexual relations with a person under the age of 18. It's even more egregious when the person is under 16. Now. Why am I bringing this to your attention? Because the state of California reasons that any minor at this age, 16 or under, or 18 or under, is, has diminished capacity, I repeat, diminished capacity to make sexual decisions, period. Sexual decisions of school children's gender identity must then be shared by a parent or guardian. There can be no secrets from parents in our schools. Shame on you for not agendizing any change to your board policy. You know, other people have named, numbered it. It's very clear you would like all of us in this room to just go away and forget about your secrecy policy. It's not going away. We're not going away. Parents want answers. At this moment, a federal lawsuit against this district has been filed by a parent who was not informed about her child's transition to another sex while they were only 11 years old. Tell me, when a teacher begins calling a child by a different pronoun in the classroom, how does it not get around to the rest of the student body? Yet the parent was not informed or even given the opportunity to give their consent. Save this district millions of dollars. Make your policy clear. All teachers and counselors must notify parents on any sexual matters, or there's the very real possibility that others will be joining this lawsuit. Uh, agendize this policy. Go on the record. Your voters want to know what your vote is on this item. Secondly, if I have a moment, I would like everyone to get the, everyone on this board to get this book. I could not read the whole thing. It, will, it gave me nightmares by what's going on in our country, in our schools, across the nation, and at this moment, at this very moment you heard tonight, it's going on in our town. Please help parents and grandparents. We want the best for our kids. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm here just to speak in general, and I'm here to speak to you about your curriculum. Childhood is a time of joy and innocence, and this should be an absolute right for all our children. 
1% of elementary school children have gender dysphoria, but you are affecting the 99%. Most kindergarten children don't know how to tie their shoes or recite their home address when they start school. But instead of teaching academic basics, schools are actually promoting identity confusion, emotional harm, and insecurity, negative impacts that last a lifetime. It's no wonder that child and adolescent mental health issues are in a steep rise. When students are taught to question their own identity and select from an ever-growing list of confusing options, gender identity is taking precedence over student and well-being and safety. It has infiltrated schools without parental consent and at the expense of academic learning. You were elected by everyone in this room. You're undermining parents' constitutional rights to control their children's education on sensitive topics. Public schools should not become a place where children are exposed to radical sexual ideology. It couldn't be more clear that systemic patterns of secrecy, disregard for the rights of parents in the public, and lack of transparency are running rampant at Chico Unified. From practices with students on campus to the way the board president runs these meetings, the patterns of secrecy and disrespect is not dis surprising, but it is very concerning. At the last meeting, the board president stated, and I'll quote, there are children present and everybody does hear what everybody does say, and we also have a civility clause for this space that succinctly is to please remain respectful and refrain from any sort of bullying, harassment, or otherwise negative comments that may hurt some other folks who may be more vulnerable than others. A couple sitting up front, Jeff and Samantha Shaner, flipped off board members and speakers they disagreed with. Jeff also verbally abused every female speaker who didn't support the parental secrecy policy. The board president did nothing while this happened in clear sight of her. She did nothing to protect those vulnerable women. Nothing. This was stunning given her comments about civility. It wasn't until Jeff said, F you, you dumb bee, after my speech when I requested intervention and public outrage ensued and he was finally kicked out of the meeting. These board meetings are the only opportunity the public has to address their elected officials. The practice of tolerating disrespect and disregard for the public's right to address our government officials without harassment is abhorrent. It's, a cur it's curious that video footage from the meeting shows the camera angle changed partway through the meeting so that viewers could no longer see the Shaner's disgra disgraceful behavior. This move suggests the district was aware of the Shaner's behavior and instead of standing up for the victims of bullying, once again employed a pattern of secrecy and lack of transparency. Somebody simply changed the camera angle. Further expressions of the systemic patterns of secrecy, lack of transparency, and disregard and disrespect for parents and the public continued when the board leadership motioned to table the parental secrecy discussion until it could be discussed in private. The board president already had the opportunity to ask questions and discuss the topic for as long as necessary with the district's attorney, Mr. Gant, but instead chose to remain silent and keep these discussions secret. The patterns of secrecy, lack of transparency, and the disregard and disrespect for parents and the public with how these meetings are being run mirror what's going on in practice in Chico schools within the culture that exists among admin, teachers, and counselors who feel entitled to keep parents in the dark while transitioning students without their parents' knowledge. I am not surprised at all that this is happening given the patterns that we are seeing in these meetings, but again, it is very concerning.